deck guy. Duh. There! Now there's audio. Now? Oh. Hello! People can hear us now. Uh, we're here. Uh, we just watched Bulkheads, because Bulkheads, and it's 2.30, and we're going live. My name is Eris. Um, uh, Phoenish is... Uh, Phoenix, send a script, quick. Uh, <laughs> Phoenish's name is off oh, I've, center. I'm sitting... Tier. Okay, I'm sitting tier. Oh god, right, uh, so. I can trip there. Oh my god, Phoenix's his name is just totally yeah, there. That's you, fixed. You I am <laughs> so disorganized today. It's not even funny. I don't even have an intro. So instead of an intro, I'm just it's, gonna sit. <laughs> it's a little funny. <laughs> You're a little funny. <laughs> yes, I am. Thank you. So instead I of an intro, I said that to him before we started the stream. Fast cut. Uh, this tie is actually really wonky. I didn't have time to go get a better one. This tie is actually just broken. No, and I shouldn't the tie have put it on. is fine. You're wonky. <laughs> so, Savage. joining us today, and and the reason that I played the entire episode four of Bulkheads before the show, uh, is uh, we've got Mister Phoenix Feather here. I'd do it. It wasn't me. It was him. Uh, it he was did not. all the bulkheads. Uh, we've also got Nakara and Shiver, but they're always here and don't matter just like I don't. But we have Phoenix Feather. So it's not very nice. <laughs> I'm not a very nice person on, on stream or in person. It's weird. Um, so basically, we're going sure he to... Shiver slaps you. Yeah, I do. I've slapped Shiver twice, three times now. Twice. Uh, more will come. Um... We're going to get right into this because we've got a huge, huge show to go through. So huge, in fact, I believe that we're actually skipping edutainment, which I really wanted to have this week because we've got Nakara and this is a great week for edutainment because SpaceX has done a shit ton of important things since our last podcast. So Star Citizen is greater than SpaceX. The real life stuff. Okay. Yep. Well, we're a Star Citizen podcast. I kind of figure that we should focus on that. Uh, you know? That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. But uh, I just wanted to mention before we, we really get into it that uh, SpaceX had some great launches last weekend and this week and uh, put the Bulgaria sat way higher into orbit than it should have Gone nope, and... not Bulgaria set. Oh no, sorry. The in, uh, the Intel, Intel. Intel set. Yeah, sorry. That's why you do these, not me. But um, <laughs> but yeah, we'll we'll do a more thorough edutainment session next time Nakara's on. Mm -hmm. For today, it should be next weekend. Next weekend, yes. For today, though, we're going to start by talking bulkheads because bulkheads is back. It's canceled. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> When did this happen? It's like a show on Fox. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is it? It's been 10, it was what, 10 months and six days between episode three and episode four. Mm -hmm. So, was there months. a cliffhanger? No. Yeah, I, that that kind of was a cliffhanger ish. Wasn't meant to be. I mean, episode four would have been a better cliffhanger. It would have, you're right. So, um, let's talk a little bit about Bulkheads, because I don't even know if we've had you on the show before. I don't think I've been on this one. I don't I think might so. I've been on one back when it was the show that shall not be named yeah. and a few others. But <laughs> so, I uh, think I disappeared before Relay became a thing and then came back now that Relay's yeah. a thing. So, Fiendish, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, No. Oh, okay. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what got you into Star Citizen? Oh, that was, it's an easy one. That was, um, saw the trailer on Facebook, the launch trailer on Facebook, like, two days after the Kickstarter had started. And before it was done, I had already bought my package. It was a re radical <laughs> package. Had to have the Constellation. Most I ever spent on a game. Thought I was crazy for spending, what was it, $225 on... The Constellation Rear Admiral package, and then the first live stream came out. They sold the Idris M. I laughed at people who bought those. And then a couple months later, my second ship was an Idris P. I paid more <laughs> for less ship. Now I'm, uh, blah, 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 what is it, like three and a half grand in the hole for this game. Not to mention the time that you've spent 
producing videos because you've done a number of different videos focused oh, on yeah. Star Citizen. I've I have two thousand and seventeen hours logged in Steam on CryEngine. That was the Steam version of CryEngine. That was before we made the jump to the new non-Steam version of CryEngine that we're using now, which they probably have, I don't know, 60 or 80 hours into that already. So, yeah, I got over 2,100 hours logged at CryEngine. Making Star Citizen stuff. Making Star Citizen videos. And, and you kind of started, like, the first time I remember seeing it was, uh, what was it, Pieces of Eight? That okay. was the first was... big one that I remember seeing from you. That was, I think, my fourth or fifth one. Yeah, that was that one was fun because that one got featured um, by YouTube because it was 4K yes. 60 FPS. Um, that got selected. It was on YouTube's official playlist when they launched it, and it was featured on Engadget. It got featured on The Verge. Um, I got like friggin' a million views overnight on that video, which I'm really sad that one, I didn't have a monetized channel, and two, that I rebranded my channel and removed all my videos. So yeah. For that's that's gone from history, but that was a lot of fun. That was a it was a good video. It was uh, back in the day. That was a big deal because that was right after PAX Australia um, when they did the FPS demo and you know the whole huge speculation of shipboarding and all that stuff. That yes. Was, now it's small stuff, but back then it was a big deal. So mm. how did uh, how did bulkheads come about, and what's the goal for bulkheads and which one uh because i think we're on revision three now <laughs> run, run through that so originally bulkhead started if you guys ever saw the original trailer where trendane gets his face mauled by the crab from the aquarium tank it was originally supposed to be a group of two or three people on a derelict when i say derelict not necessarily derelict but a rundown space station in the middle of lawless space I'm just going to follow the antics of these people. It's going to be like two or three episode arcs where just a mini short story takes place. Um, worked with Disco Lando on that one. And it never really fell through because he got hired and so a couple of other things happened. Then went underground for a little bit. Then did a couple of other videos. Then I really went underground because I moved from Hawaii to Florida. Then I got back into it with Balkids 2.0. That's when I talked with Dolvac. And literally, like, overnight did the video, the Balkans 2.0 trailer, where it pans all in, all epic, like the Mark Hamill um, trailer. And then, what was it, Grockies, I think it was, did the spaceship noises. Um, <laughs> then we moved into war working with you, Eris, and Dolvac, and Grockies, and Splice Point, and Trendane, and Meyer, and everybody else that, fortunately, my brain can't remember at the moment, to what Balkids is now. But... It has gone under so many revisions. It's died like three times, Ball Kids 1 to Ball Kids 2 to now, um, and hopefully now it stays around. <laughs> so uh, what's what's the future showing for holding for Ball Kids right now? Uh, it looks better than it did last year because last year school got in the way and I didn't have any time, and now I think I have a good balance of school and life. So it's going to stick around as long Excellent. as everyone puts up with me. <laughs> I'm in. So, so uh, yeah. Thanks, thanks for being on, and thank you for for you know doing bulkheads, basically. Because uh... thank you for writing bulkheads. I don't have an imagination. <laughs> I couldn't make this stuff up in my sleep. Uh, I don't think you should thank me. I think you should actually thank the voice actors for taking what I write and turning it into things that are actually funny. Um, they are pretty good at living. <laughs> They, I don't write exactly what you see. I write something close, and then they ad lib it to be better. So, is it a case of here's a script, and they're like, "Well, this is what we're not gonna say." <laughs> Sometimes it does that. Some every now and again, it'll look at the line and be like, "No, I'm not reading that," and then they'll just make something up on the fly. Oh, those bastards! Who? What kind of asshole would drift <laughs> off a script that someone's taken all that time and love to make? Uh, Smart ones. Rocks. That's so, right, Rocky. Just called you out. <laughs> so, uh, if anyone out there has not seen Bulkheads yet, I mean, you probably just watched the first one. There's another three episodes on YouTube. The fifth one is entering production soon, I believe. We've got wow, scripts. Wait just completely ignore your shorts. Well, I'm getting there. 
getting there. <laughs> we're we're working on some more. There's also a whole bunch of uh, bulkheads shorts that I sometimes think are better than the actual episodes because they're small, contained, and hilarious. But uh, yeah. Easy to produce. They yes. take like three days to make. Yeah. And if you have any questions about bulkheads, if you have any questions for Fiendish Feather, throw them in the question document. We'll get them later. And now, because, oh my god, there was so much this week on ATV, we got to get into ATV. I'm still not through it myself. <laughs> yes. Yes, we definitely have to get into it. And I, I actually have a really good grasp on this ATV because I transcribed it or about half of it with Desmarius. Desmarius did um, the other half, and uh, he's awesome. Once um, again, huge and, shout uh, out to everyone that does uh, transcripts for Relay. They are what keep Relay running, not me and, doing uh, podcasts. And Canadian Syrup <laughs> also uh, pitched in and helped some as well, and then all then, then did all the really hard part, which is actually getting it all formatted and posted everywhere. Yeah. Um, but uh, I then I, then I watched it again. And then I watched it again, and then I did all of the gifts for today's uh, show. So, yeah, I got a <laughs> good idea what's in this one. <laughs> well, we're going right into show and tell because there's a lot to show and a lot to talk about. So, yep. Uh, transition. Oh, look at that. Smooth transition right into asteroids. Um so one of the things they talked about in this week's Around the Verse was dust shaders kind of making making it easier for them to make the verse look pretty. And one of the things is asteroid belts. And <laughs> yeah, they and they they improve them again. Like they've they've done several iterations of making asteroid belts better, and they're looking really nice now. So much eye candy. It's so yep. good. And also, I, I do oh. like the, um, they also, with this section, they also showed off, like, some small nebulas and stuff that they're using that space dust shader for. Um, I also like that you can see that it is actually generating the asteroids as you zoom in. You can see in the top left, it says generating asteroids, generating asteroids, generating asteroids. <clears throat> and they still got more work to do because they were static still, and they said they want to see if they can get them moving so they're not, you know, just props. They do want them moving, yes. Does does that, like, straight up, does that seem insane to anyone else? Oh, it's, it's definitely insane, but I, I also stage, think they're going to do it. At this stage, no. <laughs> You're like, no. <laughs> Asteroids are probably the more simple things they can do. Yeah, well, let's talk about one of the slightly more difficult things that they're doing, and let's let's switch over to ecosystems. Because there, there's a nice gif here of just a giant valley with trees and water in the distance and man it's it looks so Not bad it looks so good rip tech artists seriously <laughs> <laughs> oh on a side note i don't mean to sidetrack you but no do it my, my twitch says relay covers spacex and telesat 35e launch and i've refreshed the page twice now Oh, it sure does. Yeah, we have uh, <laughs> the wrong title. Wait, what? Uh, our, <laughs> title on, our title on Twitch is Relay Covers SpaceX and Telesat 35E Launch Take 2. But I thought I renamed it. Give me a moment here. Uh, I'm going to switch over to you guys talk about some outposts Meanwhile. while I... Meanwhile, uh, so... Oh, we're going to talk about outposts. Okay. Yeah. Well, Put the gif up. I need to see it. It's up. Oh, oh there it is. Oh, I've got a... Um, right, I have to... <laughs> uh, only Phoenix is important. <laughs> I guess I need to talk about them. Um, so, uh, this what this is showing off, and I, I did quite like this shot. Um, I mean, there is some of the interiors, but what they were showing off mostly was the uh, all of the bits and pieces they've added to sort of uh, um, uh, go along with the outpost. So they have like water collectors and uh, solar power generators and. Um, storage containers all sorts of other things and relay stations Re relay relay station relay stations relay um, stations relay, relay. Stations. uh <laughs> is that the name um, of the show yeah it sure is <laughs> um and then uh, this other shot was uh basically they were showing off how the 
outside of the outpost is covered with dust or sand or uh, frost, depending on which pl- uh, moon they were on, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. There's okay, so I I hate that I have to bring this stupid game up again, but it's still the most relevant when it comes to what CIG are doing and No Man's Sky. Now I remember a whole bunch of times in No Man's Sky where they've got this all everything is procedurally procedurally generated and you jump onto a planet and there'd be a procedurally generated little outpost like this and half it would be in a mountain or you couldn't reach it because it's stairs were like like just broken and what cig are doing with the with the footings and without it just it doesn't look that way now now don't don't be fooled there are going to be those when it first comes out that's not gonna not be a thing at first we're gonna find outposts inside of mountains or underwater or in places they should not be during the initial testing phase. But that's where it comes into play, where it's procedurally generated, but then a person goes in and they handcraft it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I would like to mention, too, is that... Um, and you are you are very likely, right, Finish, that they probably will find some that are messed up. But uh, one of the first things they identified with Outpost, and they talked about this uh, like a month or two ago, was they went... They originally had the outpost right on the ground, and they're like, "Well, then we can't put them on uneven terrain. We can't, um, we can't ensure they won't clip, and you know all these other problems." So then they created that the stairs and the footing system, um, and they can change the level, and it uh, it works really well. Um, but uh, yes, you'll still inevitably somebody will have this picture from the PTU of an outpost like on its side, like halfway up a mountain, <laughs> <laughs> and be like, "Uh, no, that's not what we wanted." But I just I love the system that they're going with to make the outposts look like they belong in each, and and not just that they belong in each location, but that they've been in that location for a yep. long time. Right? There's there's dust there's There's decals really added depth to it yeah yeah definitely yeah i also really like that the the branding like that that's a really cool easy way for them to create like you uh not unique but very uh, variation in the outpost uh you'll see there's a rayari one here and then the other ones i don't know what branding the orange ones are but shubin was it shubin Mm. i don't don't know the gift squad maybe Sure, it's, it's disappeared. Um, so this is the first of three gifts in a row that we're basically showing some amazing vistas near the end of the episode. Um, I believe this is Daymar, um, and it just looks incredible at sunset. I, so pretty. And and that's another thing. All of these plants... I, I love the fact that it's actually the sun that is giving you the sunset. It's not yep. a skybox. It's not anything else. It's literally the sun through the atmosphere giving you a mm-hmm. sunset. And you can see that planet in the distance. And that is an actual planet. And you're actually seeing what of the planet is lit. And it's like... Like 20 times in this episode, they, they re- reinforced that there are no backgrounds in Star Citizen. Everything you can fly to. Um, like... It's all there, you know. That's something that bothers me, though, because we've known that for a long, long time. We've Fast known that up. for, like, two to three years, but... Well, we've known it, but we haven't seen it. You land on Art... You, you load up yeah. in a... Yeah, true. You load up in Crusader, you have a boundary. You load up in Art Corp, it's a skybox. You know, you load up in Arena Commander, it's... It is. Contained. Lots... There's, there's new people... Who have come in that don't necessarily know that that's exactly. what yeah. it's going to be. It's... Not only that, but but it's it's also something that other gamers would probably be like. Literally, I can't tell you the number of times I've shown somebody a screenshot from Star Citizen, and they're like, "Oh, look at that skybox," and I'm like, mm, it, it, that's "It's not, not skybox. a skybox." Yeah, <laughs> it, and it's well, it it is kind of sad that we have to explain that so often, but I think that it kind of goes towards CIG having some issues with. As good as this ATV was, let's be clear, not many people are going to watch a half-hour weekly show about no. a game. No, only the only the core base will, and the core base already knows a lot of this stuff. Yep. For stuff like oh, this... I saw um, on Reddit, I saw some thread asking about procedural generation, and this guy was still under the impression that planets are procedurally generated in the verse in real time 
for everyone as they land on it. And it's like, no, that's, that's <laughs> no, that, no, no. And, and I look and the top, I looked all the way through that Reddit. No one corrected him. Yeah. Um, well, it depends. <laughs> It depends what he was saying because they actually did say that in the episode. But what they meant is that is that it doesn't the game doesn't load in the planet when you load the the game. It streams that planet live, and they actually said it procedurally generates it while you come in. It's just he was that, using it in the same way that they're going that they mentioned about the procedural generated cities. And it's oh, like yeah. cities can be done like that, but the entire planet will not. So. Know. <laughs> uh, I don't know if any of you remember, but a few weeks ago, myself, Nakara, and a bunch of my actual real-life friends, we all sat down and hey. had... Real-life <laughs> friends? <laughs> well, like... like I'm, I exist. <laughs> you are one of my real-life friends, but you are also one of my internet friends. These are the friends <laughs> that... Well, actually, straight up, these are the people that live in my basement, but... Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> live. Yeah, it's kind of slavery, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> we sat down and had, honestly, one of my favorite relay stations that we've done, and that we just talked to some people who aren't as interested in Star Citizen, or were interested and don't, like, haven't followed to see what they think. And they had all kinds of questions, and it was, it was a really good look at, okay, there's a lot that Star Citizen just hasn't that CIG hasn't explained well to people, right? Mm -hmm. And and I think what Gracky's mentions in chat here is actually really important, is that once 3.0 is in the hands of players, it's that's where perceptions are going to change. Uh, oh. The game to this point has been good. You've had Arena Commander, which is a pretty good, you know, fly around, shoot stuff. You've had Star Marine, which is like an all right idea of what first person combat's going to be like. And you have you know, Crusader and Art Corp, which give a kind, tiny bit of an idea of like, oh, here's this bigger place that you can fly around. But 3.0 is going to be the idea of there's an entire, here's a planet. Oh, and this isn't a planet. It's actually just a moon. Yeah. The planets are coming later. Also, this is just one system. There's going to be hundred system, like, yeah. And, and one of the things I'm really looking forward to is shortly after 3.0 launches and is available to everyone, not PTU or whatever, I'm going to get almost that same group of people. I can't get Nakara because he's far away, but I might get you to do, uh, sit in through Skype. But I want to get that exact same group of people back again to do the same thing, to see what they think after they've played 3.0. Because I think it's going to change. Oh, I agree. Um... One thing, th this just came to mind, and I want to mention it before it leaves my mind again. Yeah. Uh, one of the really cool bits out of this ATV was, and a question I'd, I'd had in the back of my mind for a while, was I wasn't sure where Damar, or not Damar, not Damar, Delamar. Delamar. I wasn't sure where Delamar was going to be placed in the Stanton system, since it's not actually in the Stanton system. Um, you know, in the lore. Yeah. Um, we actually got to see that because they showed off the star map, uh, twice in this episode and they showed Delamar orbiting Crusader uh, well beyond the orbit of any of the moons but it is still orbiting Crusader not orbiting the star um, for like the Stanton star uh, so I thought that was pretty cool to actually get a better idea of what our play area is going to be like in 3.0 yeah. um, in 3.0 yeah um I do want to touch quickly on something that Fastcard says. Uh, he says that the pro part of the problem is that the website isn't good for new backers, and he is 100% correct. Yep. Yep. The website sucks. Hopefully they yep. fix it soon, <laughs> but it sucks. It's all Flash. Yeah. It's just Not bad. Adobe Flash. Just it's just, flash. it's Flash. It's things. Here's stuff. Look at I me. I actually don't. I actually really don't like the the autoplay video that comes on every time because it. No. I find in a lot of, even when my computer's bogged down, it starts to it has a hard time on that site. Yeah. Um, it is not a very so, efficient site. It's horrible to use mobile. Oh yeah. Yep. And uh, and then on computers that aren't as powerful, it, it mobile really first. Bogs Hashtag down. mobile first. <laughs> okay, so.
let's move on from Space Dust. Let's talk a little bit about the Cutlass here. Because they showed oh, off some Cutlass. She looks gorgeous. Uh, the cutlass. Brand new Cutlass. <laughs> brand new Cutlass. I hated the Cutlass for a long, long time, and I still kind of hate the Cutlass because it got it. Ha, it has received the the so like. Helpful. Well, it's it's now received the the time and attention to detail that I wish the freelancer got because that now looks like a damn good ship. The new Aurora the looks really good. Well, yes, yes, it does. Ellen Bachelor did an amazing job on that ship. Very but, nice job. And, and I don't think I've got a view of it straight on from the front. But it looks like a bloody attack helicopter. The Cutlass? It and does. It definitely I can it see looks that. mean. It looks aggressive. Yeah. But, it's like, not... the Cutlass in these... But the important these... issue is, right, the thing that everyone who's got a Cutlass needs to talk about, it's the most pressing and concerning issue, is what the fuck are we going to do when we need a toilet? Just go in your suit. It's fine. Oh, yeah. Oh, Space yeah, diapers are for Yeah. Does it still have those pointless cupboards on the back? The, it, the current cutlass has these pointless cupboards. It's only like, it's in the shape of a triangle. It's 30 centimeters across or so. And they put a door on it that you can open and you're like, why, why is this even here? Okay, so <laughs> hang on. This, this last gift that I'm showing has a number of really important things in it. One, as it lands, you watch those <laughs> landing gear compress. And it's exactly. settled. And that is insane. And two, hey. on that door opening thing, look at the bottom. There's a lock the door. I want to, I, I got to talk, I got to talk about that. Oh, yes, there's a lock on the door. You're oh, right. God. Um. So I get to finally talk about this because it was a freaking um, studio tour. So I wasn't able to say anything about it. Um. We first saw the the compressing landing gear. Yeah. Uh, so like the the suspension back at, in LA when we did our studio tour in October, um, and they were working on uh, one of the artists is working on the constellation, um, having the the compressing landing gear, um, and it's finally in the game and it looks great. So I want to know now we can't really see it from the video here because he's just like dropping like a rock in the cutlass there. That was a really terrible landing. But um, <laughs> I wonder if it's actually animated as in you'll see all the hydraulics move or if as of right now, it's just kind of the gear compresses in scale or something. But it's, um, it's, it's no, like a well, hydraulic I, move. Ooh, it's going to be so good. What I saw was the hydraulics moving. Oh, OK, um, so it sits the whole nine yards. Yeah, yeah. And I actually think that's why it's taken this long to get it in, is I think that's probably what it still is. Is it's the to... full you know, full physical simulation of the yeah, compression and yeah. Really cool. Yeah. It also means it also means when you have a rough landing like that, your ship won't explode anymore. <laughs> so can we quote you on that? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> let's let's follow this little base out from Delamar. So this looks like the eye to the planet video just it was the base i know but i, I really was i definitely as soon as i saw Those this atmosphere episode, I was like i need this um i love the haze great... yeah the oh, haze okay. is so glorious yeah they've also made it way clearer now um i noticed that delamar is an is a planetoid a very large asteroid it's not a planet yeah like it looks it looks more appropriate now than it used to um but yeah. I like, I, I, this is something that you can only notice when it's really far out. But on the right hand side of it, you've got the really rocky mountainous side. And then on the left, if you look, the left is pockmarked by asteroid, by, by meteor hits. And it mm -hmm. kind of shows that that, yeah, is, right. that is the side of it that is open to, to the, the, to open to space essentially, right? And that's yep. the side that's going to get hit. And that's so, like, that. that's another little touch that no other game thinks to add that. that they, just put a, they just put a texture on the planet. And yeah, <laughs> but look at the moon. Like, that, that's how moons work. Moons defend planets from asteroids. Yep. It's And I find this so amazing. It's, it's just a little tiny touch. But you can see where the mountains have been eroded by meteor hits. And... Mm -hmm. Like, look at that. Sorry, I'm geeking out. Gushing, a bit. yeah, <laughs> gushing a little. I think it's I, I think it's so cool. Um, 
I don't know if we have many more. Uh, oh, let's let's look at particles because particles are pretty. Oh, see, those will get me gushing. Yeah. So, <laughs> Phoenix, why don't you gush a little about some particles? Well, if it's the uh, okay, that's not the one I would I was thinking about, but that is I love that. That is glorious. I wish they had a particle count on the screen there because I want to know how many are being a uh, rendered at any given frame. <laughs> many. That's so <laughs> glorious. No, the one I was thinking of was the uh, the one where they're on the ground and they're turning on and off the effects. Those. Oh yeah. That one. That one is glorious. Do I have? Yeah. Where's that? That's the I last. Like how... That's those seven gifts in a row that are all of the reclaimer on oh, the ground. Oh no, I don't. I didn't get that. Shoot. I didn't That's get the those most in in time. One. That is that one is glorious. Well, I will move. I I think I can actually still get. I can get them in. I I know how to do this. Yes. Okay, what am I switching playing, to? Playing with particles in CryEngine is one of the most fun things I can do, and to see that GIF right there is just amazing. Um, so the one he wanted to sh see was the one where it's turning everything on and uh, or turning everything on, which is. Uh, yeah. Uh, one second, uh, I will get that in. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but... On the fly, folks. Damn it! Uh, no. Just, just uh, gimme. I do love that they did fireworks right after July Fourth. Um, it was a nice touch. They always have those little things in there. Like, they also did the homage to Alien when Alien Covenant came out as well. Is it Covenant? No. What the heck was the new movie? Is that right? Ah, uh, that's a new one. Yeah, Alien Covenant. The July yeah, short. Okay. Although, I think half of the Ball Kids crew isn't in the United States, so... <laughs> I was talking okay. to someone who there, um, this one. was listening in on the GPU system and things like that and how they're moving past the and, and he started to get worried that they're moving too much over to the GPU. And in fact, th this is good because a GPU is much more suited to making calculations to make particles and physics and things like that. The CPU is not built for that, which is, nope. you know, why these things that are, have physics and um, that one's David, for the yeah. David, that's not the, that's not the one. It's the one. It's the one after that. Yeah, I'm you getting that one in too. Plus. Okay, perfect. This one is just showing. This one is showing like all the different layers that they have to work with. So like the wireframe, the albedo, the world space normals. Um, by the way, the reclaimer looks incredible. Oh, it does. Oh my god. Okay. Also, if anyone wants to see this full scene, this is a streamable link. Um. Sorry. For it's like two minutes I'm gonna, long. I'm just gonna click that and, and leave it on my other monitor and just loop it. Mm. Mm -hmm. There we go. Mm, yes. All I, right. I love so, how things just get turned on and on. Because traditionally you build you have the level and then you have to you have to add the um any particle effects. You gotta add the volumetric fog. They're all separate entities that are all built just for that area. But the fact that they're doing it procedural and for for the entire planet, that just oh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. I can't wait till they have like um, like world spanning weather and stuff in there too. Oh, that's um, great. So, hang on. Um, I'm just I'm gonna throw in another one of the other gifts here oh, for a second because. Um, my baby, look at look awesome. Look at this ship. Oh, she's gorgeous. Ow, like, look at her. Look at it. Look at that ship. See, was, the, thing that's, the thing that's really glorious about this shot too is this is rendered totally in engine, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I'm assuming it'll be exactly what we can do. But it looks so cinematic. It looks like it was uh, freaking rendered in Maya. And it took hours and hours and hours to render, but this is all real time in the engine. Something that we can do walk around. Yep, it's just so good. And that ship is freaking huge. It's, I can't I wait mean, to see it blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, my thing is that ship. Honestly, and I was saying this in in Discord chat uh, earlier this week. That ship one hundred percent looks like it could fucking fly through a planet mm -hmm. like <laughs> like look at that thing it is a hulk i love it so are we going to address the actual issue with this little clip though what why didn't they take a shuttle down to the planet they wasted all that fuel land in the reclaimer so the guy could go through a box i'm just saying i i actually think that i don't know if the reclaimer uh, has a shuttle oh well i don't think so no waste um and it might, it's a moon. It might not have very much gravity. 
might not be very difficult to land at all. Oh, that's true. Because now I remember what were they talking to? They were talking about that's how di- like that's Dimar. I don't remember when it was. I just remember hearing it. Um, forgive me. They were talking about how like you'd balance your cargo, or you'd have to use more mm-hmm. fuel because the IFCS would have to compensate and all that. Yep. Um, by the way. I do like that they reiterated in t- this episode. Um, all of the moons will have different atmospheres, different um, different atmospheres, different um, gravity uh, e- ecosystems, and different gravity. Um, so that's awesome. Um, uh, I do also want to point out at the you- very end of this clip. If you look at the very bottom, you can see a person, and they're bending down. The reclaimer has to be like forty or fifty people tall. At least. Easily. Like at least. What how tall are these people? Are we talking like people who have got some sort of growth hormone deficiency? No, because they <laughs> don't exist in Star Citizen. <laughs> they straight up don't. Oh, like boy. Size you just ruined my immersion. I thank you for that. But they don't. <laughs> I want to go Citizen... to Planet of the Hobbits. Star Citizen can't <laughs> account for it. They need to have like a six inch variance between people so that everyone fits in the cockpits <laughs> and everyone can work. Cause that's that's it. Though it would be really cool if they did something like allow- six inch variants. I dated someone like you once. Oh yeah, you should have the rest of that gift where the camera pans up and, and Yeah, I, I mean that's there. that's another one. I've gotta add it. I don't know which one to add. There's so that's many the one after. <laughs> um but uh yeah, it's uh, just kind of incredible. Oh, I do like that there's also a, a cactus right behind the guy's butt. <laughs> um, that's potentially how where's, 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 There we go. <clears throat> uh, I will actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I do want to take a moment uh, to apologize to anyone who's listening to this in audio format. Um, <laughs> this what. This this isn't going to be a good episode to listen to in audio format, and it I should have said this way way before the hand but straight up we're talking about pretty things we can't talk about them in audio only we need to look at them and you got to look at this ship and look at the the ground that is a procedurally generated ground that oh, actually grounds, looks uh, when, it, when when it pans up and it actually uh, looks uh, cracked and you can see the hexagonal like the cracking and the oh my god the normal maps are so real right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, yep. Yeah. Oh, it's so nice. Mm. So nice. Um We got a few so, things we got a few more things we gotta cover. Here's I one wanna... of them. What's what what are we what are we The what star we, map. What are we covering? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. the star oh. map. It looks so good. Ready I, to texture, baby. That's ready I, to the texture. The only thing I hope and I and I know they will. Um is that they have some kind of auto dimming thing in the Moby Glass? So what's behind you there? Because right now it looks great because we're in, you know he's looking at the Port Olsar wall, which is dark. But if he's outside looking at you know if he was looking at the light side of Crusader, you ain't gonna be able to see crap on that map. And you also, if you look at the bottom menu part of it, you even have trouble seeing like suit. Then what's the second thing? Then EVA. Then power. I can't. Uh, I can't uh, read the yeah. second one. You know? Yeah, it looks like it's yeah, something something They, they need to power. figure that out a bit. Yep. I have faith. I think, they when will. It, I think when it's actually full screen on your monitor it'll be fine. It might be. I that think that might be true. But I like how it dims everything in the background and you can actually see the stars even off the side yep. of the screen. It's Love it. oh looks so good. Also, oh wow, I just I, realized that you're right. That's yeah. not because he's inside. He's not standing he's, outside. No. No, he's standing inside. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. And That's that looks so awesome. cool. Um, um, I do want to mention that they are not done with this. They, no. they, they still have a couple weeks left before, like they, they added more time to this task in, uh, in the production schedule. Um, basically they want to make it work better and look better. And, uh, and then even then it won't be done. It'll just be done for 3.0. Yep. Uh, this is literally just the first implementation of it to yeah. get it in the game. Yeah. The, we're, there's going to be more coming. They do show us things. I mean, this is probably stuff that they worked on last month. It's not what they're doing right now. But no, one, not. they show us older stuff, and two, they show us stuff well before it's ready. And I, I hate to go back to the example of it, but when they showed us the golf swing 
uh, radar mm -hmm. thing. And everyone blew up saying, this is terrible, what's going on, this is horrible. And it's like, no, guys, this is early. It's an idea. It's an idea, and they're just showing us kind of what they want to do for single-player shifts as a way of making it so that it's active. Yeah, yep. sometimes, yeah, exactly. Sometimes it's just, this is a placeholder mechanic just because we need something to mm -hmm. kick this into life. Mm -hmm. Because obviously, you know, when you're testing sensor sweeps and things like that, you don't want to have to go through the entire complicated mm -hmm. process when you're nope. testing it. Just one button, yep. kick it in, see how it works. Now, we need... I, I do really like this, uh, this shot. I mean, <laughs> I just... I was going it through the really procedural gorgeous. planet section and I was like, what parts do we need to clip out? And I'm like, that needs to be clipped out. I cannot wait to be walking up to one of those derelicts on one of the moons. It's going to be awesome. Now, the derelicts are going to be on the moons. They're also going to be in space. There's going to be starfarers, yep. constellations, caterpillars, and freelancers. Yes, that's the initial oh four. The initial four. Thank until, you for getting that. Until Thank I you. have Thank a derelict for Icarus, saying it. though, I'm, I'm not happy. Well, I, um, I think we'll the, derelict, have the derelict the derelict javelin has already been shown, of yeah, course, because it was uh, in a demo. Um, javelin, it wasn't an address. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Although, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was the demo with the sandworm, right? Yep. Okay. Yes. And they've come a long way with, with derelicts uh, between then and now. Um, yeah, they're looking really good, actually, and it, and it looks really easy for them to to implement them. They showed actually one of the gifts I had was actually showing them placing the derelicts on the planet. That and, was uh, straight up some gifts did not make it into this episode because there we're are like so many. 45. <laughs> we we should actually be going to question time right now, but we're still not through but, the gifts. So I wanna actually take a moment to yeah. do a sidebar here. Um uh I wasn't I wasn't necessarily gonna bring this up, but there's some really good uh bits of information here. Um Board Gamer did an interview with Aaron Roberts last week. I uh, just wanted to fire some of the bits and pieces that uh, came out of that. Uh, Mining is in 3.1, um, and it will be planets first. They're going to try and get asteroid mining and gas mining in, but they are not promising that. Uh, planets will be the first implementation. Um, the other... Bits, probably the most important bit I found in this whole thing is actually not about near term, I but it was probably the biggest confirmation we've had of this. Um, basically, players will be able to um, players will be able to f change the dynamics of an entire star system. So if you manage to force the Vanduul entirely out of a system, the um, the game will respond to that by by having humans come in and colonize and establish military outposts. And that's actually will something control. that that actually goes back to an interview I did years yep. ago yep. for a different site with oh, crap. I can't even remember his name anymore. No, was that either. was that the interview where they talked about how the Vanduul may or may not launch a full scale attack on Earth at some point? No, this PU? this was an interview no, I had. Was, with the guy who started Operation Pitchfork. Yeah. I did an interview with the guy who started Operation Pitchfork, and in that interview, he was talking about how he had actually talked to CIG about how they had, had to change their design for the game, because if Operation Pitchfork happens, and if at the end of beta we all attack the Vanduul space and we end up taking that area of space... They had to, they they realized CIG realized that they one had to have like the entire Vanduul mothership has to be modeled out because we're going to be attacking them. There has to be everything has to be modeled out, and two, there have to be <laughs> mechanics in there for if we take over and if humans move back into that area of space. And this is yep. this is going back three four years that they've been thinking about this stuff, and it's insane. Because the you know original, what, the like the first, is so the far first is subsumption. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, the first thing they ever said about Operation Pitchfork Sailor is Sailor sixty seven. It was Sailor sixty seven. Thank you, Hot Job. The first thing that CIG ever said about Operation Pitchfork is that's cool, but we won't support it. Yeah, <laughs> and then and then like a couple years or like a year or two later, it started their tone changed and went. 
Uh, it looks like there's a lot of support for this. It seems really cool. We'd like to support it in the game, but we don't know how. And then, <laughs> and then it moved on to, okay, now we will, we figured it out. We're going to allow territory exchanges in, in the, yeah. uh, in the game. But, um, but yeah, this, it's a great example ahead. about how CIG really do listen to what we are asking them for, even if they don't always show it. They do, but, and if you think about it too, it's probably something they they've wanted to do, but they didn't want to put it in the original implementation of the game. Because, well, I mean, think about it: the scope was so much smaller than what it was. You know, we weren't supposed to have atmospheric flight, and nope. You know, in one point oh of the game, let alone three point oh of the alpha. Yeah, yeah, yep. Um, so w in this in this uh, section, basically, is mentioned that. You can push the Vandal out of a system, and you <laughs> will come along behind. It'll let, they'll colonize. They'll start up patrols. They'll p set up military outposts. Now, on the flip side, you can also have the opposite happen, where a large-scale invasion can happen from the Vandal and push humans out of a system. Um, and I thought that was pretty cool. That's, um, yeah, that's going to be glorious. It's really going to make the make PMCs an important thing. Yeah. It's, oh, absolutely. The game is going to be insanely huge, and I can't wait to see it. Uh, I do. I really want to talk about this this gift, though. What ship okay. is that? The Hull Sea Telescoping. Oh, that's that is a glorious. Oh, well, okay. That was that white box interior was the Hull Sea too. Yeah, with yeah. the lighting. Yeah, it is. yeah. So good. It looks so good, and how it fits together and everything is just amazing. Rip that poor animator. Yeah, it's gonna be so pretty when they when you actually see the whole hull C like fold out in space. It's gonna be amazing. Or even a hull E, which is even oh, <laughs> twice the size. What sort yeah. of speed? Now this is, this is the most obscure question. But what sort of speed would be satisfactory for that? Would would you want it to just be fast and quick and just chunk, or no. would you want this to look slow, chunky? I, think I like want it to take noise. more time it's... as you get bigger. The hull the hull A yeah. should take, you know, maybe. 10 20 seconds ticks. the b should take maybe like 30 40 seconds the c the d the e should take like five minutes to fully well, this unfurl is the whole c and it looks like it closes at 1400 frames let's do some math here i can't math in my brain i'm sorry don't worry about it i can't math even with a calculator that take that animation would take about 23 seconds to run okay there you go 23 seconds to open that's pretty cool. Oh, I love it. Uh, I do also want to just look at this and another one quickly because they're so damn pretty. Look at this derelict caterpillar. Just oh yeah. Oh, um, and then and the gif of them using the procedural tools to place it. So good. I don't yeah. have the gifts of them placing things, which and, and that and that's all right. But it just the just the fact that yeah. it can. Forms. And that's where and that's where it comes down to where you know where we'll avoid running into things like that. For the most part, of course it'll be there first first pass, but where we'll avoid the outposts in the mountains and everything, because it isn't gonna be a few developers just okay, they're gonna execute the generator and it's gonna generate the planet. They're gonna go in there and they're gonna place these things strategically around the planet. Oh wait, no, I do have it. Here it is. The Sorry. tools just help them yeah. place things. Just like um, the demo, back the demo where they tease the address a little bit, where they, in the span of what, like 10 minutes, built a little outpost on the planet. Just like just like this with the caterpillar. He drags the point, gives it a rotate, clicks spawn, picks the prefab he wants to spawn it. It pops in there, conforms to the terrain and everything that it needs to. And it's just, the tools help the developers immensely with the speed. Instead of placing every piece there, they can use a couple of different prefabs and within the span of a half an hour builds a playable area as opposed to weeks. It's yep. it's absolutely insane. Uh, once again, if you've got questions, get them in. We're going to be hitting question time shortly. Um, are there any more gifts here that I really wanted to cover? Uh, actually, this one's pretty good. Let's just... They've been working on the, the first... The, um, the close combat animations. <laughs> Love yeah. it. Stab! Right and... In the neck. And this You're one, dead. I'm pretty. I think Nakara is going to want to talk about this one a little bit because you seem really excited about this. The jump. Oh yeah, I mean, it's so cool. 
Oh man. Now like, most people most people skip incredible. over it. Most people skip over this and it's like, oh whatever, it's a jump. It doesn't really matter. But look at the animation for this jump and the and the pedaling in midair. Yeah. yeah. There's there's so just good. a tiny bit of delay when he lands, but that's to be expected when they're still working on it. But that is a really good looking animation. Yeah. Yep. It's... No, it looks it looks amazing. And the other thing that they mentioned when they were showing this is that they will have different, like the animation will differ based on gravity. Yep. And that is so cool. And and I, Tofu de Fleischer. Wow, that was. I call him. Sorry. I call him Tofu. I call him TDFR now. TDFR. <laughs> so TDFR in chat is is mentioning Uncharted. And it's true. Uncharted actually right now has some of the best animations in video gaming, period. The animations are outstanding. And this looks like Uncharted. And part of me wonders how much of this is because they've got the mocap mo studio in-house now. Having yeah. that mocap studio in-house, that stretch goal of we can do everything in-house, that makes such a big difference. Uh, one yes. of the things that was mentioned in the in the uh, the Darby update um, <laughs> this week. What? Uh, so <laughs> let, let's let's talk about that in in real time. Um, Fiendish. Uh, Fastcart asks Fiendish, when will we have these jumps in bulkheads? Well, see, there's a funny thing about that is somebody out there, Alex. I can't remember his digits. It's like Alex S one nine three or something. And I'm sorry if I butchered your name. I really can't brain, but he actually got the version, I think it was the version six skeleton out of the star system assets. And you can put it in a mind, you can build animations. He's starting to experiment with mocap for it. If he makes any headway on it, I know a few people that want to play with it too. If we can get those things back into CryEngine, now granted we don't have the advanced skeleton like they do, and of course no fan is going to have the budget they do, but I do have a few friends that do have some decent mocap equipment. We may be able to bring in custom mocap animations into the Ball Kids Machinima. That's amazing. And that would be That's pretty absolutely cool. That's amazing. amazing. But I'm not that would mean, that would mean we could get that. a Salutin game? Hey, if 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 anybody out there has the one point two, that is the social module. If anybody out there has the one point two PTU build and can send it my way, I can get a salute in bulkheads because I've written in the, a salute so many times now. The original, the original PTU for one point two did not have the assets to the point where I could not open them in CryEngine, but it has to be the PTU. I have the one point two that was released. They've changed the assets, so I need, I need the one point two PTU. And if anybody can give that to me, I will be your best friend. <laughs> now, and th and this is a kind of off-topic question, but what would happen? Like, would you be able to switch to say Lumberyard if CIG were to be like, here, here's all the assets. Go and create stuff with actual recent assets instead of stuff uh, that was picked off the goodness. PTU. I it would I would probably I haven't had any luck with Lumberyard for some reason I just can't get it to run I don't know why I've tried everything I could think of under the sun, um, but well if they would give me their assets I would hope they'd give me their SDK which would give me Lumberyard anyway, um, but if they if they released their assets and said here you go um, I could probably still use them in CryEngine because Lumberyard and CryEngine are you know built basically the same, the same yeah um, all I would really need is their models and their animations which the animations would probably talk to each other, um, mm -hmm. but I would definitely make the jump over to Lumberyard. It would be totally worth the hassle. If so, they, uh, if, they, if they gave their 3.0 assets and said, here you go, you can open open CryEngine like you used to, or Lumber Lumberyard like you used to, it would be totally worth it. If you guys want some uh, some better animations and bulkheads, talk to <laughs> CIG. No, yeah. fast card. Actually, I don't think I've asked them directly, but I think I have put my feelers out there a few times, and I haven't heard it. I haven't gotten anything back we should, from them. Uh, we, we should put out a feeler <laughs> to Zylo, see if he can do anything for us. Maybe because because they do have them. You know, there's that there's that running Google document that has all you can get all the JSON files, but unfortunately, those are for the public builds because the PTUs um, you had to you know you had to have credentials. So even with the JSON file, you can't download you can't download the files. Damn. That sucks. Okay. Uh, once more, if you've got any questions for us or Mr. Fiendish Feather, throw us some questions. We are now going to switch to actual question time. We we went a bit long on the talking about Star Citizen because there was so many pretty gifts. Oh my god. 
Uh, once again, I do want to say straight up, if you haven't watched ATV, you really should. Neither the Relay Station, nor the Relay Replay, nor any of the transcripts, nor any of the half-assed yeah. stuff that anyone else puts out there summarizing stuff does any of it any justice. Watch the damage. Especially episodes. this one. Especially yeah. this one, like, it's just, yeah, you need to watch this one. Um, it's huge. Um... While we're waiting for a moment, I would like to mention a few more things here. Do it! Uh, Aaron Roberts said the vertical slice is still planned, uh, or is planned again, uh, for Squadron 42. Um, they also He also reaffirmed that there will be a public s production schedule for Squadron 42. Um, we, uh, we talked to ECD, or EKD, Eric Karen Davis, yeah. and at one point in that interview that failed because Jake uh, hard drive died Ooh. literally after we recorded it his his hard drive died uh, but in that interview Eric was looking to his side and being like I've actually got the whole Squadron 42 schedule right here on a wall beside me <sighs> unfortunately we don't have the video so you can't zoom into his eyes and try and catch a reflection <laughs> off the wall <laughs> and I'm <laughs> CSI, <laughs> come on! Why is it um, do the whole CSI thing. They zoom in on the zoom reflection, in, just in hand. using in the hand. reflection. They zoom in on the actual board, and then they <laughs> enhance it yeah. so it's legible. And suddenly, this one pixel reflection is clear as day. <laughs> that's how. That's that's science, shiver. You tell me that's not how it works. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's my understanding. <laughs> So uh, he did also reiterate, and this is basically understood last year, but they have basically decided they will show the vertical slice when it is done. Like, completely polished, triple A, this mm -hmm. is what we want to ship. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so we'll the other the thing is... What was that? You think we'll see the trailer this year? Uh... I no, will no longer make any predictions about Squad. <laughs> Let me say I, this: I will predict. I will predict that the game exists and will come out at some point in the future. Let me say <laughs> this: <laughs> we had bloody well better. <laughs> um, I also wanted to mention that they he actually talked about base building a fair amount, way more than we've really heard of before. Um, they have plans for base building mechanics later down the road. You'll be able to spawn there, defend it, use it to store goods and ships. Uh, they will be attackable, and ground vehicles and installations will be part of the combat there. Um, players will also be able to build functional bases, walls, habitation modules, etc. Um, yeah. I wonder how that'll work with, let's <laughs> say, the um, Idris railgun shooting at the base. <laughs> The That's going to be really <laughs> curious. <laughs> the base will cease to exist. <laughs> That'd be amazing. I wonder if we'll have real-time deform uh, the, the words are hard. Deforming of the planet surface if something really. Okay, my eyes hurt. Um, I, I don't know. That would be so good. I that doubt would... it. Well, but, it's really hard to do, though. Oh yeah, of course, because then you have to sync that across everything. Although you might, you might already have that happening with mining. That's true. So, I'm actually curious. That would be really an interesting uh, part. Like if they could figure out a way to deform the surface of the planet a bit. Like maybe not a lot, but just enough. Yeah. Make there were a few games that did it a little bit. Yeah. But those tricks that they could do, because I mean. Technically, they can't modify the planet in real time, but they could replace a small section with a prefabricated crash slot. Could do that, and then Maybe, it only yes. it only persists as long as people are around. Of course, then you leave, and it you know goes back to normal. Mm -hmm. mm. I don't know. I will, we'll see what happens. It'll we have be really, it'll... really fast erosion on this planet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to get to some of these questions because uh, yes, we go, go, we got a bunch questions. of them. So fast card starts. Uh, has Eris pitched his Hot Fuzz idea for bulkheads yet? I have not finished Feather. I'm pitching this right now. Have you seen Hot Fuzz? Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, Dolvac actually came up with this last night, and I decided that it's what we're doing. We're actually going to have an episode of Hot Fuzz that has literally just lifted the script from bulk, uh, from Hot Fuzz. Episode of Bulkheads, literally just the lifted script from Hot Fuzz. 
I'd be better than I'd be better that than with the music. <laughs> <laughs> my I like my song for that. It is a good song. All I think of is how much work episode three was to animate. Yeah. And, look at and I'm like, oh, no. Have you watched so it? Good. Have you have you listened to that yet? To the musical? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You got to listen to it, man. You should play it on stream for everybody to suffer. No, it's just me singing to nothing. <laughs> that I'm not going to make that many people suffer. Just you. Uh, so Fastcart also asks, how hard is it to stick to a script that Shiver has written? Do me a favor. Please go off script as much as possible. Shiver has not written any scripts yet. Uh, I knew he's the new bulkhead. He is the new, he is the newest writer on bulkheads, though. Uh, one of my goals at some point. I'm very sorry. Uh, one of my goals at some point this weekend is to get him more in tune with what's going on in Bulkheads. He has also already made some excellent pun suggestions for episode six, though. So I can't wait for you guys to to hear some of those. So I'm uh, so so sorry. No, they're so good. They're so good. Uh, so Grakis, who might be slightly biased here, uh, asks, "Who is your favorite character in Bulkheads, and why is it Brock?" <laughs> Because of techno babble, that's a good the techno babble delivery is by Excellent. far. I'd say Roberts and his death line and Meyer, but Meyer's dead, so, or Roberts is dead, so I can't. He can't be. Pierre's still alive. Yeah, but uh, that's not Roberts. Benedict. Well, that's Trendane. That's you know you gotta you can't. It's it's Trendane. There's just yeah. I was. I don't think you understand. He was originally gonna die off. I know. Yeah, he was so good at his character. We've decided to keep him around. All of the all of the pirates were originally going to die off, and then Trendane put his voice to Benedict, and I was like, okay, I can't kill him. Yep. Yeah. It was. It was supposed to be. This was supposed to be just a little little arc inside of the the main bulkhead story, but the entire storyline has had to change because of Trendane and Benedict. Literally because of Trendane. Trendane changed the entire story of Bulkheads. Don't tell him that. It'll go to his... Yeah, somewhere. Somewhere. Glorious, glorious <laughs> something. It'll go somewhere. Oh, uh, fucking Trendane. Uh, no, don't, no. Uh, Triangularity asks, uh, regarding that CIG is recruiting a lot of artists and designers, do you have any fears that CIG might be delayed a lot if they don't manage to fill those positions? Not really. I think I think the artists and designers are just to help fluff. Right now, I think their technical limitations are on the programming side. And it doesn't matter how many programmers you bring in. What? They're there to help fluff. <laughs> No, well, you know what I mean. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's awful. Oh, that came directly off Trendane, too. It did. <laughs> That's the problem. We were wow. just talking about Trendane. I couldn't think anywhere else. <laughs> oh, it's a shame he's not here. It is. He would love that. So, how is everyone enjoying Relay Station today? <laughs> Some better than others, apparently. Uh, no, the the artists and animators and everything that they're trying to bring on, um, they're there to help fill out the world. They're not as necessary for things like Squatch and Forty Two. They've, I'm pretty sure they've got the the group of people that they need for Squatch and Two Forty Two. This is for let's get more assets into Star Citizen faster. And we've got we've got the yep. budgetary room, we've got the money, we've got the income, we've got everything we need. We've got room. Let's get assets in faster. Cause I'm sure CIG realized it takes them quite a while to get new weapons, new mm -hmm. suits, new even new rocks on a planet. Every single rock does have to have something done to it, right? Like it's all gotta be made at some point. So yeah, having more people, it's great. Yeah, and, and you can't have know. you can't have five programmers working on the same thing. You can only task one programmer to one thing unless they need to, you know, bounce ideas. But you can have an artist. You can have six or seven artists make, you know, make the outposts. You can have seven or eight artists work on just the outposts in general because the one does the uh, exterior mesh, the one does the interior mesh, one's doing the props, one's doing, you know, other set dressing, and then you can have one person following it up doing UV mapping and texturing and. So you can have 20 or 30 artists working on the outposts easily, but you have one or two programmers that are working on implementing it. So they're going to always be looking for artists and designers, and they're always going to be looking for, you know, maybe animators and, you know, tech, tech, tech artists and all them 
but but the programmers and stuff that's that's its own monster i'll never forget uh basically when chris roberts was like so basically we're gonna get all of the foundational stuff done and then we're gonna hire like a hundred technical artists and have them build planets <laughs> <laughs> sure that you were sounds gonna... about right Sure, you were gonna. Well, I don't know if anyone played any of the Wing Commander games, but the the military armaments in there were, you know, not a great list. We're not looking like Battlefield Four amount of different battle rifles, twenty in each sort of thing. We're we're talking probably like most twenty in total for the um just the military script because it's just going to be military hardware. The, the point in uh, Wing Commander and hopefully Squadron Voice Two games is not having a completely customized military ship that you want to play in it it's playing with a predefined set of loadout that gives you a challenge or or shapes the mission in such a way that's really true it's like call of duty most of them i don't know the series has gone off the rails a bit but like you start (laughs) you you go up and you've got your loadout and it's like you can choose from these three guns and you choose your three your gun and then you go into the mission and there's more that you can grab, but there's still a limited amount. Star Citizen is going to be more like an MMO where there's going to be a lot of stuff. But Squadron Forty Two, yeah, there's. I mean, how many? How many? Linear. How many rifles does the U.S. military use? Two. Well, it, I mean, General yeah, Infantry. Oh. Yeah, just a few. But but it's still just a few rifles. I mean, the Canadian military uses the best rifle in the world, but they only use one. Mm-hmm. You've only got one rifle in your yeah. entire army? Yeah, it. everyone else uses hockey sticks. Do you all share it or something? Yeah. Take yes. turns. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're going, we're, uh, we're taking after the Russians in World War II. Yeah. Shoot, what pass it on. Shoot, pass it on. Uh, it's a variant on the M16. It's a Canadian, it's the C. Nakara, look it up. I mean, it's, I'm on, I'm on. Thank you. I Google it. I was just curious if you. They only have right. one guy, Dave. The Canadian <laughs> Army, Dave. Oh my God. <laughs> he mans the border twenty-four-seven. <laughs> the C seven, okay. C seven A two. It's it's a better variant of the M, whatever you guys got. Well, we have the M sixteen and the M four. Yeah, it's better than those. Um, because it's Canadian. Uh, so carbide uh-huh. edge. <laughs> I should mention, because we're talking about it, um, a uh, Canadian sniper just destroyed yes. the, uh, the record for longest shot. And it's not the first ever. time. Canadian snipers have often held the longest shot because, again, we're awesome. And our special forces, uh, JTF2, are possibly the best special forces in the world. That's uh, called. Uh, yeah, JTF2 <laughs> beat their asses. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, but who do you think trains your guys? Uh, hey, guys. Yeah, yes. sorry, Star, Star Citizen. Citizen. Right. Uh, so Carbide <laughs> Edge asks, uh, with planets, they'll have, they plan to have weather systems. Would it be a good assumption to have that we could sit in high orbit and watch the clouds move around the planet, maybe see storm lightning activity actually develop? Yes. Uh, assuming how in detail they're going with everything else, absolutely. That's a hundred. I think that's a hundred percent what they're trying to do. The meteorologist inside of me goes, mm, "Yep." That. You know, that it should be interesting. It, it, it would be into... an interesting system. It also is science. I, I, you've all played games with weather effects, and you've those like Skyrim, complete nightmare for it, and Fallout Four. You, you've got rain here, and you take one step forward, and then oh, sun. Look behind you, there's this line. Have you never night. have you never seen that. that in real life though? Like it I have, happens every now and again. Not like that. Life. It's uh, literally this no, line I've, of complete storm, fine. I mean not complete storm, but I've had that whole like look up sun, take two steps, and you're in rain. I've had that. It's because you live on the line when they do the weather <laughs> but the country, you literally live on the line. You live you live where they draw the front. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hey, Sorry. I used to Hot be job SC. We made the weather. Hot the weather job SC where we were... says uh, it has been postulated that Canada would be the only country that could actually invade Russia, but when they reached Moscow, they'd just apologize and have a hockey game. That's so true. <laughs> and that would decide who wins the war. Well, yeah, and clearly Canada would win because we beat them like how many times now? 
all of the times. Oh, right. Because ha- Canada right. has the best hockey team in the world. Um, moving on, Rivals asks, do you think that because the community reads it the way it does, CIG doesn't inform us more on in-development mechanics and assets than what they do now? Yes. Guaranteed. Oh, yeah. Yep. 100%. And they already, show, they already show us a ton. They show us a lot. There's a lot that they hold off and don't show us. They show us stuff that they've decided, yes, this is... Even if it's not 100% done, even if maybe the textures aren't 100% done, this is the idea we're going for. That's what they show us. They no longer show us the in-development stuff. Honestly, since the, the golf swing. That golf swing created such a furor in the yep. community that they just don't yep. show us the same stuff anymore. And it's it's yep. it's unfortunate. And I really wish people would start to well, I mean, whatever. No one listens Game to Game development anyway. is a really, really messy thing. Yep. Yep. I, I like I'll never forget this. I um like people always point out things that are, you know, changing in Star Citizen or or whatever and um, I remember reading about the early development of uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, which I, I thought was a really good game. But when it was in its alpha state, it had completely different game mechanics than the final game. Like, not even, like, it doesn't even resemble the same game. They were they were talking, like, tactical combat, where you had, like, long-range weapons, and you could destroy the environment, and there was all these things that, like... There was no sign of it in the final game, and it's funny when you actually get into that level and you're like, you know, this happens in other games too. You just don't know about it. You know, yeah. <laughs> um, things change, and uh, and also there's a few screenshots you can find from like Alpha WoW as well, World of Warcraft. It bears no resemblance really to what you have now, or even what the released game was. Games change a lot, and Star Citizen is one that, while its scope has changed, we've been able to watch its scope change. Oh, and, oh yeah. And, and, but, and and this is something that's actually really stupid, because we've got, a, there are a lot of people out there that are like, Oh, this has changed! Roar! I am angry, because it's not literally what Chris said 14 years ago when he was, like, Shut the fuck up and move on and get a life. Holy fuck. Damn! No, no you're really serious about that. I, <laughs> Damn! I'm, I'm bloody... Eris is, yes, is back, everybody. I'm bloody <laughs> fucking fed up with it, man. Like Shiver says, uh, Halo started out as an FTS. Uh, uh, the, the yeah, RTS. Yeah. An FTS. An FTS. The original original Halo E3 trailer is nothing like Halo Combat Evolved. Not even close. It happens all the bloody time. And even games that you get a full trailer and they're like, oh, we're a year out. Here's the trailer. You still find things that are missing. And people care less about that than they do about Star Citizen. There's, you know what? Spider-Man. Spider-Man Homecoming came out, or is coming out, or whatever. It's around there's some lo- there's some scenes in the trailer of spider-man and iron man swinging and flying side by side not in the movie and guess what jurassic- no one gives even- a fuck <laughs> <laughs> even jurassic park the original the 19 that was 1993 jurassic park film the original trailer there are scenes in that that weren't on the movie things but- change yep. ideas change the things that you realize Actually- you need in the game change well, where did i where did i read mass effect andromeda you know how the game oh hyped, 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 and apparently from what i've read what we've played was in development for about 18 months out of the last five years that they were developing it because yeah. they, they completely toileted everything yeah. and then built what we had in 18 yeah. months yeah. command and conquer 4 was the well, same that, way that makes that, that oh. makes a lot of oh, sense that, because that hurt, that hurt, ah, that command hurt. and conquer 4 man that, that, that makes, so that makes a lot much. of sense because Andromeda was un, uh, like Jake talked about this at length. Andromeda basically felt completely unfinished. Yep. And mm-hmm. it was that makes so you know there you go. But um, and then you also had the same rumors about the first Destiny game where they were like you know a lot of the story content was like chopped right out of it, and that's why it felt like there was no game yep. there. Yep. You and, know, you've all heard of Spore. Yeah, everything happened before. Yeah, uh, Trend Dane will tell you a story yeah. about when it was good. Yep. Yeah, back in the day, it was good. Yeah, but you it, have to and, believe, but it was apparently good. But and, and 
thing is, normally we can't see this happening. Normally we just get the final game and are like, oh, what happened? And people forget about it because, oh, whatever, it's shit, rate it badly, or oh, whatever, it's great, let's go. People don't care about what happens in development. Star Citizen is one of the few times that you can watch what happens in development. There is another example. Star Wars. The, the really old MMO. Do you remember mm -hmm. the old Star Wars MMO? Galaxies. Galaxies. Like, uh, and okay. how it, was, oh, yeah. it was really good at the beginning. And then at one point, they completely switched. Sony killed it. Sony killed it. But that's the kind of switch. I, don't, I still don't know why they did that. And that switch killed it. And sometimes games have that switch. Now, we saw it in Sony when it was live, and it's really strange that we saw that switch when it was live, because it's the switch that killed the game. But this is what happens in games sometimes. Whereas Star Citizen, they're telling us the entire time. They're letting us weigh in the entire time. Do you think people, when, when SWG switched, if they had told everyone what was going to happen beforehand and let people try it out, do you think people would have been okay with it? No. And we get to sit here and have input into Star Citizen. And you look at the recent changes to the flight model. Do you remember how long the 2.0 was in or 2. Point whatever 6 or whatever was in was in PT or e Evil yeah. Cadi because the Evil Cadi didn't like how it felt to fly mm -hmm. and they kept working on it. And they kept working with the players on it. So yes, the scope of the game has changed, but it's changed according to what we the fans want. Tell us how you really feel. This is how I really feel. I'm afraid of how you really feel. <laughs> well, one of the things with Star Citizen is because a lot of things are completely new. And not not many of us are game developers or know the process of game development. So if something goes wrong, and things often go Star wrong Marine. in any business, then people will naturally, because they don't understand, react in a way that they think is reasonable. Because there, there is this lack of knowledge of, you know, well, we threw some shit against the wall and the shit fell off, so we're not going to use that. Oh, God, it's the end of the world! And that, naturally, if you don't know the process, you would... That, that's how it's naturally react. So it's, it's, it's fair enough, but I, I do miss hearing about the golf swing. I want yeah. to know these things in between i really want to know how the fuck we've gone from this concept in chris's head to sat here playing the game i want to know the whole exactly. process and that's what those I, I of us uh, sorry go, go ahead nakar no no i've talked i enough. think that that's uh i think that that's uh, we saw a really good example of that they they showed us uh, grabby hands and they're like so this is like super work in progress but it's something one of our programmers came up with it's really cool um here, look at this. Because we want you to be able to manipulate the things in the game. Now, it doesn't look like what we're going to get is exactly like that, but what we are going to get in terms of the picking up and carrying boxes and being able to place things and being able to move your character's hands and touch buttons and stuff, that all comes out of the original concept yep. of you look at, And you look at something like the room system. Remember when they mentioned the room system 14 years ago and people didn't stop talking about the room system yep. ever? And they're still sometimes asking about the room system. It's like, guys, it was just something that we wanted to show off. That's like, okay... Everyone was completely flabbergasted when Beyond Good and Evil 2 was shown off at E3 this year. Beyond Good and Evil 2 is happening. Fuck yeah, this is a great year to be alive. But guess what? It's not going to come out for another three years. They're still in very, very early. And they're trying to go for the scope of something like Star Citizen. So when you yeah. see that monkey flying around that city in completely <laughs> open shit, who knows if that's what we're going to see in the endgame. Because exactly. guess what? That might not be fucking fun. No. We, I, I'm, I'm going to school for game design right now, and one of the things that the school really pushes on is student collabs. Like, they'll, they'll have a, a design instructor and a programming instructor get together with a bunch of students. We'll have a mock producer who's a student. Um, we'll have a couple of programmers who are students, a designer who's a student, and a couple of modelers who are students. And we will try and make a game. And let me tell you what, 80% of the time, it fails. It's shit. <laughs> Lots of the times it's shit. I've tried to write so many stories that are shit, and I've tried to write books that are shit, and articles that are shit, and I've, tr like, some things don't work, and you nope. don't hang on to them and force them if nope. they don't work. Nope. 
you move on. But you do learn from you them. Do. You should. You yes. learn from them. Why? You learn, you learn that, what does and doesn't work. And then eventually you mold if you've it learned into something that works. Yeah. Okay, I want to get one or two um, more questions before we end here. Because there are still a bunch of them. So Harold Zagnet asks, if the Endeavor dock can still fit two cutlasses at the new larger size, are you curious about the potential size increase for the dock? No, because the Endeavor is going to be fucking massive. That's why the Idris grew twice. Yeah. <laughs> it was um, a I, I, Go ahead. I've said this before, but I, I, I'm really, really glad they're saving the Endeavor to the end. Yeah. Because it is like... It's like the entire game in one shot. It is the culmination of do, the game. You can do everything except for combat. Yeah, especially <laughs> when you start putting the modules in there. Wasn't well, there a module that, you know, like a hangar module? Yep, there's a oh, hangar yeah, module. There's, there's, no, I mean, it's, for, it's not it's farm, but it can... There's yeah. a hangar module. There's a medical bay module. There's farming modules. There are tweaking modules. There's satellite modules. There's science modules. There's... Science? Fuel modules, uh, like there's uh, just the giant observatory that can yep. be attached to it. Yeah. Yep. yep. The giant. Yeah, fr there's cool. a friggin' you can attach a fucking um. Is it an a hydrogen collider? LHC. An LHC. You can yeah. attach yeah. a That's, fucking yep. LHC to a fucking spaceship <laughs> and collide fucking particles in fucking space. <laughs> Fuck. I mean, in fairness, colliding Fuck. particles in space doesn't have to be done in a hadron collider. I mean, you could just well, go like that and technically. <laughs> <laughs> just like that. Um, but I did want to mention that. Uh... By the way, uh, this show is rated R for mature. Um, <laughs> also, sorry to leave it this so late. mature with R. <laughs> If there wasn't, uh, if there wasn't enough There's other an things there, that Shimmer. the Endeavor's good at, the whole front end of the ship, like, chops off and is an exploration vessel. I know! It's like, holy crap. But yeah, that's why they're saving that one to the end, because it needs all the game mechanics. Yep. All of them. Okay, hang on. I have to understand what First Aid says here. Eris, most streamers are okay and demonstrate elements of interest for SC. You, however, well, quality. Full day Coke by any chance. I've had no Coke... Or coffee today. I've actually never had Coke. I had some alcohol. Um, I don't... It's not so much an element of interest in Star Citizen. I'm interested in Star Citizen. I think it's going to be really, really good. I can't wait to see what it's like. I'm a, I'm, I'm along for the, pro, the uh, for the process. I'm along for the ride. And that's great. Um, I think what it comes down with me is more an element of absolute unadulterated hatred and disgust for anyone that talks about Star Citizen without having the common human decency to do even the remotest iota, the barest minimum of their own yeah. fucking research before they oh start talking. Oh my god, he's back again. Um, but there no, was, a, there I was mean, a thread on she... Reddit, there was a th I have to bring this up. I promised I was going to. Okay. There was a thread on Reddit this week that was like, oh my god, procedural plan uh, cities aren't possible. There's so much going on in a city. You can't fucking do it. And CIG are insane for saying... <sighs> excuse me for a second. Please don't. E excuse Please me. Don't. Excuse me. My ears. Fucking Crytek did it in 2000 fucking and 9! Fucking hell! <laughs> <laughs> What? What just happened? What just happened? <laughs> Did you just happened? channel Jake? What just happened? Did you just like, channel Jake and combine his anger with your anger? <laughs> anyway, um, I mean, did I, your no trousers she... come off before or after you started ranting? <laughs> 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 I did want to mention, though, know, nobody should be surprised <sighs> when you do procedural cities. Our corp has always been an entire planet that is a city. They had to do it somehow. You know, they've been talking about doing it for years because they had to do Art Corp. <sighs> you know? Okay. I'm calm. It's so. New information. There are a number of questions that have been asked today that unfortunately we're not going to have the time to get to because as I said in chat, 
I do have to cut this short in exactly five minutes. I have to run to I, a financial I can answer one very quickly. Uh, Shiver, go ahead. Shiver, answer one very quickly. Uh, Zold just asked about uh, what happened to the room system. Do you guys know what happened? Is it still a thing? I need to know things. Yes, I know what happened to it. It is still a thing, but it is not going to be used by us as players in the same way that originally touted was. They are using the same room system internally so they can build out things and then they will be making something based off of that that is for players so you can build the layout of your own hangar eventually. Yeah, I know that one. Okay, oh. so before we end, there are a few notes that we should cover. Mr. Fiendish Feather, how are you today? Uh, I think I need an adult. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm a little scared, not gonna lie. I do apologize. This episode got a tiny bit real. Um, I guess we're just gonna... We're probably just gonna follow this up with the, on the captain's table. It's gonna be just like an extension of this. To be complete, to be, let, let's talk about that for a, a little bit. Uh, both of us and Meyer, I believe, are all going to be on the captain's table tonight, so it should be a really bulky show. Wow. That was not so. Um, I do plan on stopping <laughs> at a liquor store before coming home, so I will be liquored for, for the Astro Pub. So, uh, yeah, I'm talking so of liquor, <clears throat> I've been told to say there is a no not so sober Saturday, which is actually not on tonight. Not happening. I believe that's now happening every two weeks. So, the pod sat is now just Relay Station and Astro Pub, and every second week, the not so sober Saturday. My throat kind of hurts now. Um, um, I, I can't imagine oof. why. Fiendish, You'd what be a do terrible you, uh... metal singer. Yeah. Uh, also, metal sucks. Uh, Fiendish, what have you got coming up <laughs> now? What are you working on? What's <laughs> what's happening in the world of the Fiendish? Feather. School. Bulkheads taking care of all of my reptiles. Yep. Life. Cool. <laughs> Shiver, what do you got going on? Just dead air this week, as far as I know. <laughs> Do you have any articles or anything in the works? I need to get my ass motivated. I, I have several ideas for a number of ones. I don't know if anyone would even find them interesting, though, but I, I've been considering doing an overview, review, look at, because I UCH products exclusively, Hotas pedals are full shit. It's fucking amazing. I don't know if you lot want to hear about how good CH is and why. If you want to use a Hotas, you should use them or not. Let me know. <clears throat> do it. I think that's that'd be a good article to write. I do. I think it would be a great article to uh, to go in conjunction with my review of the last thing that came out of fucking Cytec. Uh, Nakara. The end of Cytec. The end of Cytec. Uh, Nakara, how's things uh, I... going on your your end? I'm I'm good, um, you know. I'm not quite as ra rage and in rage enveloped. <laughs> I I will admit, um, people seemed very entertained by my rage there. That's because oh, they were it was very entertaining. entertaining. Yes. It was scary, but it was entertaining. Scary and entertaining. I like it. Um, so uh, I'm I'm me. Um, I have a few articles that are overdue, basically to write. Um, but uh, you know, life. <laughs> but uh, I will at some point be doing uh, a review of the uh, Eclipse sale and the um, and the uh, Nox sale. The Nox sale actually went really well. Um, it was it was the back to the classic ten day sale. The uh, I'm not sure if I, people were aware of this, but the um, Eclipse sale was quite long. Um, but the Nox sale uh, raised. Uh, 1.6 million dollars, and they the UEE fleet increased by 40,000. So somewhere in around 40,000 Knox uh, bikes were sold. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, we will get to the questions that uh, that weren't asked next week. Um, yes, we will. join us for the Astro Pub. At 6 p.m. Eastern, that's in two hours from now. And also, actually, let me quickly, before I do this, find a link to it. Because Mr. Jake Acapella, our community person, manager, has asked me to post this and say it. Um, 
Uh, I'm posting a link here in chat to our T Public store where you can get Relay merch. And currently, uh, if you use the code Relay underscore SC, there's 20% off any Relay merch until Monday. So if you want like a Relay shirt or a sticker or a mug or something, go do the thing. <coughs> My throat really hurts. I'm going to need some alcohol. Um, yes. With, <laughs> with yeah, that... Help. <laughs> Come back in a few hours for the Astro Pub. I am going to yell even more. Thank you all for joining Glorious. us. Fiendish, thank you for joining us. Thank you for letting me ruin your life by running bulkheads. Um, <laughs> Shiver, thank you for putting up with me. Thank you for recording Relay Replay with me earlier. That's going to be going up tomorrow or Monday. We'll see. Nakara, Thank you for finding me when I wrote that thing like eight years ago, whatever it is now. My mind's really bad <laughs> <at> time. <laughs> Going um, back to the beginning. <laughs> it's just time is a machine. Goodbye. Okay.